Now at 5 a.m. on WKYT This Morning, they were victims of terrorism, and now they're being laid to rest in the bluegrass. We'll have more on how Stephanie and Justin Schultz will be remembered today, just ahead this morning. A Lexington restaurant was robbed late last night. Details from police as they continue to look for the person responsible. And while the weather may not feel like spring, mm -hmm. spring certainly will be in the air out at Keeneland today because the 2016 spring meet is set to start later on today. This is WKYT This Morning. Good Friday morning to you. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. I can't even say my own name. <laughs> because it's, it's Friday. Friday, I know. You know. We didn't think it would get here, right? He did. Michelle <laughs> Chamberlain. That is my name. I'm Bill Bryant. That's simpler. That's your uh, name, right? It's good to have you along with us this morning. Uh, we have a lot going on. Big weekend uh, for many. There is school today, by the way, in Fayette County because they're having to make up a snow day today. It had been planned as a day off, but there will be school uh, in Fayette County. Uh, cold one. Let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, it's uh, dry outside this morning, but we get into the afternoon. That's not going to be the case. The case is here come some showers. They'll be rolling on through later on today. Temperatures are there in the 30s early this morning. It's a chilly start, uh, but you're not seeing just overwhelmingly freezing temperatures out and about. A couple of spots here and there across 64 northbound, and then we track off towards your afternoon, 47 degrees. Put that into perspective, and we'll still have the wind outside. Put it into perspective, yesterday we actually reached right around 50 degrees for most locations. So it's a little bit colder today, and that rain moves on in later on. How is that going to affect your day? I'll have that coming up in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you in just a little bit, Mike. In the news this morning, the past two weeks have been an emotional roller coaster for the family members of Lexington native Stephanie Schultz and her husband Justin. But today, they will try to find some sense of peace as the couple will be laid to rest. Stephanie and Justin Schultz were at the Brussels airport on March 22nd when the bombs exploded. Their funeral will be at Southland Christian. Church in Nicholasville. WKYT's Victor Puente joins us from there live this morning with more on how the Schultz are being remembered. Good morning. Well, this is the second day of visitation for the couple. It's been a long few weeks for friends and family as they prepare to say goodbye. A visitation today runs from 10 until 2. That's when their funeral begins. Justin and Stephanie Schultz were killed last month during terror attacks in Brussels. At first, there was no news of what had happened to them. Then it, it was finally revealed they were killed while at the Brussels airport. Stephanie was from Lexington, and the couple will be buried at Bluegrass Memorial Gardens. The parking lot here at Southland Christian Church is already blocked off in anticipation of the large crowd that's expected here later today. After this memorial service and after they're buried, there will be a second memorial service in Gatlinburg, Tennessee sometime in the future. Live in Jessamine County, Victor Puente, WKYT. New this morning, police are looking for a man accused of robbing a Lexington restaurant. It happened at the Sir Pizza on New Circle Road near Russell Cave Road. Just before midnight, police say a masked man who claimed to be armed entered the restaurant and demanded money from the manager. After the manager handed over some cash, police say the thief took off and was last seen heading towards the Hollow Creek area. No injuries were reported, and police say a canine unit helped search for the suspect, but they were unable to locate him. A woman is recovering after police say she was hit by a car in Franklin County. It happened last night on Georgetown Road, east of Frankfort. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says the woman was airlifted to UK Hospital with non life threatening injuries. Investigators say they're still trying to figure out what led to her being hit by that vehicle. A crash involving four vehicles caused heavy delays on a busy Jessamine County Road. That was yesterday afternoon on US 27, right in front of the dish barn. Nicholasville police said four people had to be taken to the hospital. All of them had non-life-threatening injuries. Police think that two vehicles collided, causing one of the vehicles to spin and hit two other vehicles. A Lexington business will hold a fundraiser to raise money for a four-month-old baby who police say was seriously injured by her babysitter. Nicholasville police say 34-year-old Aaron Thompson is responsible for the crime and now faces criminal abuse charges. After learning of the news, the owner of the SEC Sports Pub, David Romero, says he now plans to donate a percentage of this weekend's sales to the family. Romero says he was made aware of the news by his nanny, and after she told him what happened, he knew he had to help. If this just leads down a path of other people finding a way to contribute and help uh, in any way, 
then, then that just makes it all the better for the child. Romero says 10% of this weekend's menu sales will go directly towards helping the injured baby. He says he will also match however much is raised. The fundraiser begins today and continues through Sunday at the SEC Sports Pub off Harrodsburg Road near Military Pike. A handful of folks braved chilly temperatures overnight to be some of the first to get their hands on the new Maker's Mark bottle. The Bourbon Giants' newest commemorative bottle features UK basketball coach Joe B. Hall and the 1978 national championship team. It's the second of five commemorative bottles being released to help raise money for the University of Kentucky Student Athlete Support Program. The first bottle was released last April and it featured legendary UK coach Adolph Rupp. The 2016 bottles will go on sale throughout the state at 6 o'clock this morning. So we're anticipating uh, some lines. Certainly, we had a report at one time there were people who were in their cars but had their chairs in line, ready to jump <laughs> in line if anybody else showed up. Yeah, somebody <laughs> sent us an email. There was a line yesterday afternoon right. that had already started forming. <laughs> well, I don't blame people for trying to duck into a car in the, in the cold, you know. I know, <laughs> Just be right? careful with that. I know, and while that weather isn't ideal, you can certainly count on plenty of people heading out to Keeneland today. No doubt, and in bright colors, likely. <laughs> it's one of Lexington's most popular attractions, and it opens its gates for the 2016 meet later on. Our own Mark Barber is already out at the track this morning, where final preparations are wrapping up, and I guess they're working out the horses. He joins us with more on Keeneland's opening day. Mark, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Yeah, we are finally here. It is the start of the spring meet at Keeneland. But it does not feel like it. Man, it is cold out here. When you factor in the wind, it feels well below freezing this morning. And not only will it be a cold start to the spring meet here, it will also be a wet one. As we've heard Micah Harris saying through the morning, the rain will start to move on later this afternoon. So, again, it's going to be a very cold and very wet first day at the Keeneland Spring Meet. Now, there is something that might, get, might make it well worth the weather here this morning. It is College Scholarship Day. There will be 11 prizes that students can register for. One lucky student will win $10,000. The others will win $1,000 prizes. Still not bad there, right? Admission is free for students who show a college ID today. It is about 5 bucks for everyone else at the gate, though. Now, the gates will open at 11 this morning. The first race starts just after 1 this afternoon, and there will not be any races on Monday or Tuesday through the month. Now, if you are planning to head out to watch today's races, you will certainly want to be prepared for the cold weather that will greet you here. This might just be one of those days where you want to skip the cold drinks and go straight for that hot coffee. Live at Keeneland, Mark Barber, WKYT. Hot coffee, not a bad idea. Uh, you can right. see Mark's poor breath out there. You could, it's and so you cold. would see that of the horses as well. Yeah. You make a good point. I said earlier that uh, horses uh, don't get to wear a coat. They always have their coat on, I guess, right? Oh, yeah, and they, yeah. Have, they make those and then horse they make blankets. Those too, I'm yeah. sure they have a term, but yeah. I don't know it. All right. I'm going to uh, look that up. <laughs> uh, good to have you with us on WKYT this morning, and it is 5.08 now on your Friday. Are you a fan of cuddly, cute animals? If so, this company has a contest that may be for you. We'll explain more after the break. We have a freeze warning through 9 a.m. And then we head off towards your weekend, and we're going to have a freeze warning for Saturday morning and Sunday morning, too. we got a lot to go through, and I'll show you that forecast up next. Now, your zone-by-zone zone forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. As of right now, we are dry with just a few clouds overhead, and those clouds once again helping us out. And, and look, the past few times we've had freeze warnings, we haven't really hit freezing for many locations. These clouds have been overhead, and they've really thrown a wrench in the forecast overnight temperatures. That's good news for us. So, yeah, hopefully we can hold on to that as we track through your weekend, because your weekend still looks like we're going to have freezing temperatures there during the morning hours on Saturday and Sunday, too. But there is a pipeline right through here, and it's driving right down into our viewing area later on this afternoon. This batch right here we're not really concerned about in terms of will it actually make its way to us, because right now it's starting to fall apart just a little bit. We'll see if it sticks together, but if we do see that roll into the region, it'll be in about three to five hours, and we'll only see a few light showers out of that. So a small chance during the morning hours, this is the batch. Once it comes down through here, it'll actually become widespread across the region later on this afternoon. Temperatures are in the 30s, a couple of 40s down south. I don't see anybody far, far southern zones in terms of, say, south of the Cumberland Parkway actually reaching 32 degrees. But what you're going to be expecting across the way, I-64 northbound, that is your best bet to actually hit those freezing marks. Danville right now at 32 degrees, but for the most part, as a group, 
I-64 northbound. That's your best bet. We hit the afternoon hours. Obviously, you can see by the icons the best chance of rain is during the afternoon. It's pretty widespread, too. And I would say anywhere from 2 to 7 p.m. is your best bet to have those showers roll on through. Look at your temperature at 47 degrees. Gusty winds. Put in perspective, yesterday, you got to remember, we were right around 50 to 55 degrees for most locations. And then we threw in the winds, and then we threw in a couple of showers, and it didn't feel that great. It's the same story today, except we're dropping temperatures about 2 to 4 degrees. Then we head off into the evening. It starts to fade away just a bit during the evening hours. But then we get this wraparound moisture, and it will come diving in here overnight and into tomorrow morning, which will give us the opportunity to see a few flakes across the region. Still don't expect much out of this, and if we do, it's in the higher elevations down in southeastern Kentucky, but maybe a few flakes flying around overnight into the early morning hours there on Saturday. So it's a dry afternoon, just kind of an ugly morning. So if you're wanting to head out to Keeneland, you just better bundle up. I mean, we're talking lower 40s for highs. It's going to be very chilly with some gusty winds again on Saturday. It's going to be a really cold day, but afternoon, like I said, will be mainly dry. Then we hit Sunday. Sunday is your day. Keeneland will be absolutely slammed on Sunday. And then, if you have any plans, anything going on, trying to reschedule some ball games, maybe Sunday afternoon is probably your best bet sitting there in the 60s. Next week, I know you're still seeing the 50s guys dropping it back down Tuesday and Wednesday, but after Wednesday, I've been looking long range for the past few days just for you guys because we're always like, ah, when are we going to see the mild air? But listen, after Wednesday, Thursday through the weekend and into the following week, I see no shot of cold air. No signs that's of That's good. So there's some good news for us. Good it's news. But it weighs away, but that's all right. It's coming. I was starting to think you were going to have to look to July. I know. We're going I to know. Get just kind of push forward, right? <laughs> all right. Well, you know, and then we had that warm weather this time last month. It's mm -hmm. just been kind of an odd. Uh, Can't complain. Yeah, odd spring. All right, 514 right now. So here's a furry story for you. Furry, furry. We would like to be. Would you like to be a chief cuddler of? I'm sorry, I'm messing this up. Would you like to be a cuddler of a wombat? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Well, an Australia Tourism Board is holding an online competition to find someone who would like to hug on this little guy. This eight-month-old cutie was rescued from his mother's pouch after she was hit by a car in December. He's doing quite well, as you see there. If you would like to show Derek the Wombat some love, then you would have to write a 25-word essay saying why you'd be the best cuddler. Only Australian residents are allowed to enter, by the way, but somebody down under is going to win. A chance to uh, be a friend of the wombat. <laughs> He's cute in the video. I don't know yeah. if I'd want him at my house, but he is a cutie. Yeah, yeah, he is. All right. Uh, good to have you with us Friday morning, the weekend on the way on WKYT, and uh, we have a lot more coming up for you this morning. Yeah, including a look at your money. Airplanes equipped with airbags could be coming soon, and orders for Tesla's new lower priced electric cars are skyrocketing. I'm Hannah Daniels in New York. I'll have those stories and much more coming up in your CBS Money Watch report. Good morning. Welcome back into WKYT this morning, Friday, April 8th, and we're glad you're with us. 519 now. Your first class airline seat may soon have an airbag, and scarves from Ivanka Trump's fashion line are being recalled. And Tesla shares big sale numbers for its new vehicle. Hina Daniels has the latest on your money. Wall Street is hoping for an end of the week comeback. Falling oil prices sent stocks plummeting on Thursday. The Dow lost 174 points. The Nasdaq dropped 72. Your first class airline seat may soon have an airbag. German airline seat manufacturer Recaro has filed a patent for an airbag that would be installed in the first or business class cabins. Illustrations show that in the event of a crash, the airbag would deploy in two separate zones. The first would protect the passenger's head, the second, the passenger's shoulders. 20,000 scarves from Ivanka Trump's fashion line are being recalled after not meeting federal flammability standards and posing a burn risk. The rayon scarves made in China called Beach Wave and Brush Stroke of Long can be returned for a full refund. Tesla says worldwide orders for its still to be built new Model 3 have exceeded 325,000, and that number is rising. The cost of the lesser expensive electric car starts at $35,000. Tesla started taking orders last week. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to CBSMoneyWatch.com. In New York, I'm Hannah Daniels.
A European airplane maker is taking the Toyota Prius concept to the skies. Airbus plans to start selling hybrid passenger planes by 2030. The planes would carry up to 100 passengers and have a range of about 620 miles. Now that is enough to get you from New York to Detroit. Officials say the hybrid planes would use less fuel and would be much more quiet, just like the popular Prius. Planes will use electric engines for takeoff and landing, but will still use jet fuel at cruising altitudes. Airbus says its ultimate goal is to develop zero emissions aviation. The future is now on that, and we'll see, see how that goes. It has been a popular sale. I can't believe yeah, it. Absolutely. The range, I don't know. Hopefully they work all that out, though, you know, <laughs> once it goes into service. It is 521 now. Coming up, we'll have a lot more news for you on your Friday. Sports is next. This morning, it's all about hitting a ball. Highlights of the Masters first round. The Reds start the season 3-0, and the U.K. baseball Wildcats are riding two guys with big hitting streaks as Alabama comes to town. I'll tell you about it next in sports. We're in the 30s this morning from virtually all locations except for the far southern half. We'll finish off in the 30s there, but uh, we're right around 40 degrees there in Wayne County. 32 now in Lexington, and we go through the day and watch that rain be on the increase, especially that 2 to 7 p.m. time frame later on this afternoon off into the evening hours. 47 degrees, gusty winds. It's going to be a very chilly day in store. Let's check out sports, see what's going on. Good morning, everybody. It was sunny, but it was windy for the opening round of the Masters at Augusta National. Let's go to the highlights. Jordan Spieth hitting his second shot into the 18th green. He was five under par at that point, trying to finish with a birdie and a round of 66. He rolls it in, finishes six under. Good for a two-shot lead over Shane Lowry and Danny Lee. Paul Casey playing with speed. This is his tee shot at 16. He hits it in nice and tight. That would be a birdie. A 69 for Casey. He's three back. Jason Day, really good round going. His shot into the ninth green. Day shooting 31 on the front nine, but 41 on the back nine would finish with an even par 72. So here's how they finished after the first 18. Spieth with a two-shot lead. Rory McIlroy, large group at two, under 70. Phil Mickelson, J.B. Holmes, both even par 72. The Reds going for the sweep in Philadelphia yesterday. Let me say that again, the sweep. Trailing 2-1 of the fourth, Jay Bruce connects to right field. That one's heading towards Newport. The Reds take a 4-2 lead, but the inning was far from over. Bases loaded. Ayuanio Suarez drives one to deep left. Grand slam. The Reds score eight in the fourth. Huge day for Jay Bruce. He had five RBI. Reds win it 10-6. This afternoon, baseball Wildcats open a three-game series with Alabama at Cliff Hagen Stadium. Two of the many reasons UK is tied for second of the SEC East deals with Gunnar McNeil and Evan White. McNeil riding a program best 23-game hitting streak. White is right on his heels with a 20-game hitting streak. They definitely are uh, pushing each other. You know, I mean, uh, the culture on this team is is one of the better cultures I've ever been a part of, and uh, uh, they are the two guys that have. Uh, uh, have really taken a, uh, a leadership role in the sense of, uh, you know, the mentality that we're trying to preach and, and, and live up to. And uh, they've shown a, a great ability to keep their poise under pressure and uh, continue to push each other. So let's hope Mother Nature gives us three games this weekend. That's a look at sports. Have a great Friday.